Amen, amen. Hey, welcome to Thursday Church, the Sunday edition, and I'm glad that you are with us. And we are taking a great big chunk of time, an entire year, as a matter of fact, f- to focus on the 2020 vision uh, that God has for humanity. We, we want to embrace as much as we possibly can of what God's plan, his vision, his direction is for humanity, not just for ourselves. But for humanity, what's this big plan? As a church, for the past 12 years, we've been saying that we're doing church differently. We're staying true to the message of Jesus Christ because it's really important. Because staying true to Jesus Christ is our mission, but without that focus, nothing else falls into place properly. It it just doesn't. See, Christ has to come before everything. 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 Nothing else comes first. Not even our marriage, not even our children, not our work, not our finances, nothing. Not even our church. Christ comes first. And when Christ comes first, all of those other things play into place. They they fall into the correct order, and it's good. But in life, there are bumps along the road. And and in life, there are times when when we we face struggles and burdens and trials. And there are times that those things, those circumstances, those surroundings, they affect our heart. And they affect our heart in a way sometimes that gets us off track because we start responding responding out of ourself instead of out of out of what we feel that God is directing and leading. And so this month, the the vision that we're focusing on connects to issues of our heart, our heart health. Last week we talked about our physical health. This week we are talking about the benefits of having a stout heart. Now the word stout, if if you're thinking of the word stout as being robust and sturdy, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the benefits of of a, a godly, surrendered stout heart. And in Proverbs, King Solomon, he he shares so much wisdom. If if you want some wisdom, if you're in need of wisdom, you read Proverbs every day. But in Proverbs chapter 4, he's speaking of the issues of the heart, and this is what he says. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they will bring life to those who find them. These words, these words of God Almighty will bring life to those who find them and healing to your whole body. Guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. If we are to guard our heart, if, if, if the heart directs, the rest of our life, then this passage, this, it's speaking of something that's very important. We've got to know how to guard our heart. We've got to know how to protect it. Now, in Scripture, as we are talking about a stout heart, there are, there are two different forms of stout hearts in Scripture. Um, one is negative and one is positive. There is a a stout heart that is interpreted as being courageous and brave and bold and determined and sturdy and surrendered. And then there is a stout heart in Scripture that speaks of being obnoxiously uncompromising, obstinate, inflexible, unforgiving, unyielding. And in regard to issues of wanting your own way, it is this thinking that it's my way or the highway kind of thing. So one is a positive and one is a negative because one is surrendered to God and one is surrendered to self. And there's a huge difference, a huge difference. One is going to bring blessings and joy. One is going to bring misfortune and heartache. And so... Knowing the difference between a self-surrendered heart and a God-surrendered heart is extremely important. See, with both stout hearts, they're both strong. They're both determined. So, so it seems that they could have some similarities, and yet 
They are as different as night and day. See, a stout heart that's surrendered to self tenaciously believes that I can do life by my own rules. I can make up my own boundaries. I don't have to follow these, these restrictions of God. And when we start thinking of God's plan for our life as a restriction, then we know right away we are, we are suffering from a self-surrendered heart. Because God's plan is never restrictive. It is always to protect and to bless and to reward. So this, this self-surrendered stout heart, you know, I've been thinking about this all week because, well, because I've had the opportunity to put these words on this page. But in all of my years of pastoring, and I'm not just talking about the 12 years I've been here. I'm talking about all the years that I pastored at First Church as an associate before before Thursday church, in all those years, never one time, not one single time, have I ever met a person who has this self-surrendered stout heart that is content, that is completely happy, that would define their life as blessed or filled with joy. I've met a lot of strong determined, self-surrendered folks. They're capable. They're willing. They're powerful even. But they're missing out on that contentment piece of joy and happiness and blessings. When a person chooses a life that isn't connected beyond themselves beyond their own way of thinking, beyond their own rules, beyond their own boundaries. When, when a person chooses that kind of life, a life that isn't connected beyond themselves, everything revolves around their own opinions. Everything revolves around their own thoughts. Everything revolves around their own convictions, their own beliefs. And so their world is very small. When you don't make room for the truth of God, you're the one directing your life, not God. And that's a surefire road for heartache. It, it, is, it is almost like um, a death sentence to joy. Because when your world is just all about you, you rob yourself of what God wants to do with you. But when you have a connected heart, a surrendered heart, a, a God-surrendered stout heart that's connected to the creator of this universe, that's co co connected to the, the Lord of lords, the master of all things, the king of kings, now this heart has this connection that goes far beyond yourself. And when we have this God-surrendered Stout heart, I want you to hear this. The possibilities for joy and blessings, miracles and miraculous wonders are limitless. 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 What do you want? Do you want this? Or do you want all of it? I don't know about you, but I want all of it. I want this, that even in the face of burdens and struggles, because you're going to have them. That's, that's, just, that's just part of living in this world. Even in the face of burdens and trials, God can use those burdens, those trials, even grief, and connect us to something that's far big, bigger than our circumstances, than our moment. So this God-surrendered stout heart is extremely important. So this week, I want you using your study notes. I want you reading through some of these passages about a stout heart. And I want you asking yourself, as a church, we need to be asking ourselves, are we, are we surrendering the issues of our heart to God, our circumstances, our struggles, our pain, our grief, our trials. Are, are we surrendering that stuff or are we just holding on to it?
trying to figure it out all on your own. See, basically, when it comes to the issues that pull at your heart, and there are a lot, there are all kinds of things that will pull at your heart. Basically, there are only two options. When, when we're talking about these issues that touch our heart, there are only two options. One, they're going to be self-surrendered. You can be stout. You can be strong. You can be sturdy. You can be, be courageously bold. But if it's all just connected to you, it's just limited to your ability to be strong, to your ability to be determined. So are we going to have this stout heart that is limited to God's possibilities or just our own? It's a real important thing to be thinking about because there's really only two options. A God-surrendered stout heart or a self-surrendered stout heart. That's it. One is stubborn. One is obstinate. One is blessed and one is rewarded. One will always walk in the fullness of God's kingdom. And one is limited to your own understanding. One will bring joy. One will bring frustration. Out of these two options you got to decide which world you want to live in. Where do you want to trust your heart? To self or to God? Joshua, oh, Joshua had a God-surrendered stout heart. In Joshua 24, 5, it says, But if you refuse, if you res- refuse to serve the Lord, then choose this day whom you will serve, the gods of your ancestors from beyond the Euphrates, or the gods... gods in the land that you are living, the gods of the Amorites. As he thinks about that statement, who are you going to serve? You're going to serve the gods that your ancestors served from beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the land that you are standing in, the Amorites. But he says, as for me and my house, as for me and my family, as for my crew, we're going to serve the Lord. And he was determined. He had this determination that his house, his family, would serve God. A stout heart. But he had a God-surrendered stout heart. Joshua lived about 1,400 years before Jesus. So he walked with Moses. He was uh, connected to and led with Moses. Moses is the one who, who gets the, the, the Israelite nation out of Egypt after 400 years of slavery. And, and so he leads them out into the, the desert. And these folks, they had never experienced freedom. Their entire life they had been slaves. And so as Moses leads these people out, they're excited. They're enthusiastic. They're like, yes, God has promised us this awesome land, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land where we can provide for our families, a land where we are free. And they are so pumped, so excited until they get to the desert. And the desert is a difficult place to be, especially when there's a million of you. To provide food and water and all of these things. And to trust that God's going to provide. This was a scary thing for the Israelites. And instead of trusting in this vision that God said, I'm going to free this people group and I'm going to send you to this beautiful land. They bought the promise until it got difficult. And the moment it got difficult, they became self-surrendered, stout-hearted people. Focusing just on themselves and their needs. And they couldn't see the big, audacious plan of God. And so they wander in the desert for 40 years until almost every single one of them die off. And a whole new nation comes up. And so so Joshua is is at the, um, the beginning of the end of this 40-year time uh, in the desert. Moses dies, and now Joshua is going to lead the folks into the promised land. Promised. Put an ED on the end. It has been promised. It's not promised land. It's promised. God promised this to these folks. And God tells, tells Joshua, now the promised land is right over there. It's right over there. You can see it. Now do you just Cross the Jordan River with your people, and it's yours. And when you get over there, 
There's this mighty fortress of a city called Jericho. And it is a massive place. You won't miss it. It's a phenomenal city. It's a fortified city. A fortified city means there's two walls. One wall here and about 15 feet later, there's another wall. And they, it, you cannot penetrate a fortified city. A mighty city. And God told Joshua, you're going to take Jericho. Not only are you going to cross the Jordan, you're going to take Jericho. So open a Bible and let's look at this stout-hearted, God-surrendered, stout-hearted man, Joshua, leading his people. We are looking at Joshua chapter 3, page 182, and, and this confidence that Joshua has. And what I want you to hear is there were trials, there were burdens, there were struggles. What do you do when you face a trial? Do you become like the Israelites who, who when faced with the trials of the, of, of the desert, make it all about themselves and their own ability? Or do we have this God-surrendered stout heart? And so, so Joshua says, come on, folks, we're going. And they, 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 they march up to the Jordan River. And now there's a problem. There's a huge problem. The Jordan w River is wide. It is swift. It is deep. It, it, there's no way they can get across. There's just no way. It's too dangerous. It's not, it's not even a, a possibility. It's an impossibility. And not only is the river wide and deep and swift, it is flooded now. It's at flood stage. It's like looking at the Mississippi River during fl flood season. And, and they can see on the other side. They can see the, the lush valleys. They can see the, the, the green fields. They can see the rolling mountains. It's all right there. They can see it. This land that God has promised to them. It might as well be 10,000 miles away because they can't get across this river. There's no way. But, but Joshua, he has this God-surrendered stout heart. That song we just sang right before giving, that, that song that spoke of that faith. I don't know how you're going to do it, but, but, but I believe the walls will fall. That's what he's talking about here. And, and so Joshua says to the people, hey, get yourselves ready. We're going to cross the Jordan. Are you kidding me? How? He didn't know how. He, he had no clue. But he had this stout heart. And if God said, you're going to cross, he doesn't have to figure it out. He doesn't have to determine the rules. He doesn't have to come up with the boundaries. Because he serves this big, audacious God who's in control of the universe. And so he tells the people, get yourselves ready. Churches, I think about this. And we're talking about spending this, this whole year Focusing on God's vision. Are we getting ourselves ready? Do we have that kind of faith? That come January of 2021, we are going to hear redemption story after redemption story after redemption story. Because we're getting ourselves ready so that we can seek those who don't know the Lord. So that we can pray for them. So that we can love them. So that we can be an example. So that we can reach that one person that God's laid on our heart. Who is your one? Who are you praying for? Who's your one person this year that you are seeking out intentionally? That you are praying for daily that you are loving and that you are being this example of Jesus Christ who's your one are you getting yourself ready so that that, that when we have completed this task of searching out God's vision for us as a church and for humanity and for ourselves and our own lives and our families that we will see something mighty I'm counting on it. It's already begun. We've already heard some amazing things happen in January. I can't wait to put it all together next January. I can't wait. Church, are we getting ready? Do we have that kind of faith? Are you approaching someone who, who says they're an atheist, who says this God stuff isn't true? Are you approaching them with the love of Jesus and trusting that something audacious is going to happen? Or are you limited to your own understanding? It just can't happen. No, it can't happen on your own. Are we getting ourselves ready? So Joshua tells him, get yourselves ready. We're going to cross this river. 
here we go. And then Joshua told the people, purify yourself for tomorrow. The Lord will do great wonders among you. Verse 6. And in the morning, Joshua said to the priest, lift up the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people across the river. Folks, he's telling them, lead the people across the river. And the river is rushing. Lead the people across the river. Lift up the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people across the river. And so they started out and they went ahead of the people. And then the Lord told Joshua, Today I will make you a great leader in the eyes of the Israelites. And they will know that I am with you just as I was with Moses. Give this command to the priest who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few steps in. Couldn't take any more than a few steps. Because if they did, they would have been washed away. I mean, this is a raging river. Take a few steps and stop there. So Joshua told the Israelites, come and listen to what the Lord your God says. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gergashites, the Amorites, and the Jesubites ahead of you. Look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan. Now choose 12 men, one from each tribe of Israel, and the priests will carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. And as soon as their feet touch the water, the flow of the water will cut off upstream, and the river will stand up like a wall. The water will stand up like a wall. Why? Because Joshua wasn't self-surrendered. He walked up to that gushing river with faith, and he said, if God has said we're crossing, we're crossing. And God holds that water in place. And that's exactly what they do. God did a mighty thing that day. A mighty thing. And he didn't want the people to forget. And the reason there was one man from every tribe, 12 men, because those men, as they walked through the riverbank, they were to pick up a great big old hunk and stone and put it on their shoulder and carry it out to the other side. And when they get there, they're going to make a memorial. Joshua 4, verses 6 and 7. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, when our children ask, what do those stones mean? What's that pile of 12 huge stones? stones mean they will be reminded that the jordan river stopped flowing when the ark of the lord's covenant went across see the god of the israelites is the same god that we serve he wants to do mighty and miraculous and amazing impossible things in our lives when we are when we are so focused on having this self surrendered stout heart I'll, I'll do it my way I'll do it on my own power I'll be strong enough I'll be smart enough I'll be determined enough God God says all I want you to do is just say I trust I trust that you're still going to do mighty and miraculous things. He's still in the miraculous business, folks. He's still God. He still wants to do amazing things. Impossible, amazing things. And I don't know what river you're standing up against. I don't know if it's addiction. I don't know if it's alcoholism. I don't know if it's divorce. I don't know if it's a wayward child. I don't know if it's an affair in your marriage. I don't know what your raging river is, but God can take hold of that. He can take hold of that raging river, and he can part the waters. He can. That's the God that we serve. He hasn't changed, folks. If anyone's changed, it's us. So Joshua does exactly what he's told to do. And now the next part is, and you will conquer Jericho. 
So now they've taken three days to get through the river. Three days. Three days for Jericho to be watching and well aware that the Israelites are coming. They don't have a place to hide. They're out in the open. But Jericho is behind a fortified city. And God has said, you're going to take Jericho. And I imagine Joshua is at this point saying, I'm not sure how you're going to do it, God. But okay. All right. So he's walking around. And, 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 and as he is, and he's looking at this huge fortified city, there's this man standing there, this soldier. And, and he says, are you friend or are you foe? And the soldier simply says, well, I'm the commander of the Lord's army. That's who I am. And Joshua falls to his feet and says, what? What does the Lord want me to do? He, he, he doesn't say, Lord, I think we can take him this way. Will, will you give me the strength and the power to do this? He doesn't make a plan and then surrender the plan to God and ask God to bless the plan. See, a lot of times when we pray, that's how we pray. We say, God, I'm, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and I need you to bless this. I need you to help me do this, this, and this. No, Joshua just fell on his face and he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? That is a God-surrendered heart. And he's told, take off your shoes. Really? That's the plan? Just take off my shoes. Well, that's easy enough. The land... The, ground that you are standing on is holy ground in other words you're not going to do this joshua i am this land is holy and you, you you just do as i tell you to do and so god tells him the most ridiculous thing you got to read about it for yourself this week he he's going to tell him to march around the city they're going to shout at a certain time and the thing that the thing that the Israelites aren't aware of, you know, they're, they're out in the open. They have no coverage. They aren't in anything fortified. They've been traveling for 40 years. What they don't know is inside that city, the example they have set. That city is shaking in their boots. They are the ones that are protected. They are the ones that are fortified. They are the ones that are strong. They are the ones that have an army. They are the ones that have warriors. They are the ones that have weapons. And they are distraught. Because they said, have you seen, have you heard what this God of the Israelites is capable of? He stopped the raging river from flowing so they could walk over here to get us. They were so filled with fear. The Israelites had no clue what was going on inside the city. See, you have no idea. You have no idea how God is using your God surrendered stout heart in the lives of people who don't believe. And when they see God doing audacious, miraculous things in your life, you don't realize that behind closed doors they're saying, This God, this God that they are claiming is amazing. And they take the city just like that. Even in the face of a giant burden, a trial, grief, struggle, heartache, pain, whatever it is you are facing, I want you to hear that there are possibilities of joy and blessings, miracles and miraculous wonders. And they're limitless when you have this God, God surrendered stout heart. If you want power, if you want authority, if you want might, if you want influence, surrender. If, if you want
want victory and accomplishment and success. Surrender. If you want joy and happiness and contentment and peace, surrender. Stop trying to be strong on your own accord. Because it just limits you to the abilities of your own heart. Pray to this God of the universe. Lord, what would you have me to do? Quit trying to figure everything out. Lord, what would you have me to do? And I'm going to tell you, prayer works. A few years ago, a few years ago um, right as the Super Bowl was getting ready to start, I wanted to use this story last week because it was really fitting with the whole Super Bowl thing, you know, but it wouldn't work. So I've been holding on to it, and hey, and now it's going to work. So here we are. The American Atheist Group put up a billboard right, right outside the Super Bowl, and it said, A Hail Mary only works in football. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, then talk to a Catholic friend. They'll explain to you what a Hail Mary is. And if you don't know what a, a Hail Mary is in football, talk to a football coach. We've got a couple of them in the back. I can see two of them right now. So talk to a football coach. Talk to a Catholic. You'll figure it all out. A Hail Mary only works in football. And then they had this press release ready. And so they release this press release that says, it's time for people to stop praying because prayer doesn't work. Well, here's the thing. If you're only praying for your football team to win, it doesn't work. But if you are praying with a God-surrendered stout heart, Lord God, what would you have me to do? Prayer is a tool that can never be taken from you. And prayer is a tool that brings victory and strength and courage, blessings and miraculous wonders. Prayer works. Lord, what do you want me to do? Say that with me. Lord, what do you want me to do? And then believe and trust and know that right before every miracle, right before every miraculous work, there was a trial, there was a struggle, there was a difficulty, there was a burden, there was heartache. Lord, what do you want me to do? What would you have me to do? And if we can adopt that kind of mindset and that kind of surrender and that kind of strength, we cannot be stopped because God's power is limitless. Amen?